Okay, this is going to be a review on Water Furnace's new Symphony. And first I have to say that I am biased toward Water Furnace. I don't work for Water Furnace, never have. But our last Water Furnace, a geothermal Water Furnace, lasted for 25 years and it was still working when I had it replaced with a 7 Series and that was in 2014. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get one of the 12 uh, beta symphonies. In fact, uh, this particular one was supposed to go to Sky Heating and Cooling to the owner of the company, but Travis uh, gave it to me to try out and report on it and uh, he gave it to me. So anyway, if not, I would have bought it anyway, because this is a feature that I've been looking for for quite a while. Uh, my wife and I are retired. We do a lot of traveling, and we like to be able to see what's going on at home, as well as being able to control what's going on at home. Okay, first thing about Symphony is that it is served up by water furnace. So the Symphony unit plugs into the 7 Series and sends it to Water Furnace. Water Furnace then massages that information and puts it into a web page. You have to log on to your particular uh, device at the Water Furnace website, and I've already done that. And it basically, this is the default that it comes up to. This is what they call the dashboard, and you can see it has some really good information including the, the uh, weather forecast for our area, including energy usage and uh, equipment summary. And I'm gonna go over this uh, in more detail. But uh, then it also has option to look at the thermostat. And in my case, I have three zones for the thermostat. So I can modify uh, the temperature, uh, heating, cooling, whether it's automatic, uh, the schedule, the fan, all that kind of stuff uh, as from for each zone remotely. So, and again, I'm going to go into that in, in more detail, but I thought I'd just show you what that looks like. And then the next thing is the, what they call our energy summary. And it, it gives you a history of your, your energy usage. Now, obviously, this hasn't been online very long, but this is showing you a year's worth of energy. Uh, so I just got March and April as being the, uh, the energy that's, because uh, I just got this in uh, uh, the, the end of March. And, uh, and this is, we're about halfway through April. So I only have a partial graph here. You can also look at weekday and day of the week. And again, I'm gonna go into more detail on that. And that's pretty much uh, the information uh, that is available to you. Uh, you have compressor, your loop, basically the real-time functioning of your, your heat pump so you can Look at it from anywhere in the world. You can modify it, turn fans on, do whatever you want. And now I'm gonna go into more detail on each one of those screens. I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. And the first thing it's going to do is bring me up to the, what they call the dashboard, which gives you an example of uh, everything that's going on with your system. And in my case, I have a three zone system. And uh, right now, it's, uh, I've got heat turned on in two zones, one and three. And the temperature is 71 degrees in zone one and 67 in zone three. That's our master bedroom, which we like to keep cool. And you can see here that uh, this zone is off. That's our living room and we're currently not entertaining. Uh, this tells you 
what's currently going on and in this particular case I have zone 3 set up with a fan only so the only thing that's going on is uh, is the fan is running because I have it set that way to run continuously it also brings up information about the supply air which is at 64.84 degrees that's com what's coming in uh, or excuse me going out of the water furnace and uh, also the, the uh, air coming into the water furnace. In our particular case we have a heat recovery ventilator system which is running right now uh, which is a reason why it's actually doing a little cooling. The loop we have an open loop system and our loop or our temperature right now is 54.9 degrees. Uh, it also shows your, if the auxiliary heats on, your compressor speed, your fan motor, and uh, well, we've just since we've been talking, the fan went off and you can see we're now in standby mode. So, uh, anyway, so we're zero on the, the fan speed, zero on the compressor shows the uh, humidity levels, the uh, compressor, how much power it's drawing, the fan motor, total energy that's being used, auxiliary heat, and then whether the, the loop's on. Even gives you the weather forecast, and you can see that right now we're at 52 degrees, and, uh, or 52 is our high, and 41's a low with rain, which I must say is, exactly what's going on. Now I'll take you to the thermostat mode. Thermostat is basically exactly what you have on your thermostat. And uh, and this, if you're familiar with the water furnace, this is pretty much what the the uh, the, furn the uh, thermostat looks like. And you can see it's right now set for zone one, it's at 70. And I can change that just by uh, hitting the up arrow or down arrow. I'm going to set it for 72, so we'll have something to look at here in a second. And I can then go to uh, zone 2. And you can see because of this right here, it's kind of been grayed out that nothing is turned on for heating or cooling. And then for zone 3 and 65, Heating. And if I wanted to change that, I just click on mode and then I can set for uh, heating, cooling, or auto. And depending on which one I activate, it will turn these guys a different, like this one is not grayed out. That's because it's set for heating. Okay. And you can also set the fan for each mode. So right now you can see zone three is set for continuous. And if I wanted to set it for auto, that would mean any time that there's a demand on the system that it'll uh, turn the fan on. Or if you want to run it intermittent. Now, the one complaint I have about the intermittent is it doesn't give you very many choices. You can only have the on time for up to 20 minutes and the off time a maximum of 40 minutes. And I would prefer to be able to have more off time. I'm hoping that Water Furnace makes a change to that. In fact, I'm sure they will. Uh, I'm going to give them some feedback to that point. Um, so if I wanted to change that, then you just click on save and you would have your uh, intermittent. In my case, I want it to be continuous, and I hit save, and it will save that. Okay, now, also while we're on this zone, I can set it for vacation mode, so I can, it'll, sorry about all those pop-ups. Uh, you can set the vacation, so it, uh, you can tell it when you're gonna be gone, when you're gonna be returning. And you can also pro uh, do programming remotely. In our particular case, I just have it set for two times. 
of day, uh, 1 at 6 a.m. Where the heating is at 65 and the cooling is at 68 and at 8 a.m. for 68 uh, for heating and 55 or 85 for continuous with, or 85 cooling with fan on continuous. Now you can also change the number of events so you can have a number of four, of four events per day which uh, would make it so that uh, if you're working you would have four options and as you can see it, it changed to four. Now I'm going to set it back to two because that's where uh, both my wife and I are retired so it uh, doesn't make sense to have it for any more than just two times a day and you can uh, edit it either by every day of the week or you can customize it down to the individual days, uh, weekends, weekdays. I mean, it's, they've got it set up really well for scheduling. So it's very quick. And then you can copy from one day to another, or one weekend to another. So if you have a particular routine that you have, but it's only on Thursday and Friday, you can copy it and transfer it over. Uh, all in all, they did a, a, a pretty good job of, uh, of this particular uh, function. Uh, I wanted to show you the energy usage. So it has three, basically three pages, a thermostat page, uh, the dashboard, uh, your different devices and actually four pages I guess the dashboard the thermostat your energy and then different devices uh, this is the energy utilization for the year and you can see I only have uh, actually two partial months you can click on by week and one of the cool things is that they break it out by your heating um, now I'm not sure what they mean by part and full, uh, but there's heating part, heating full, cooling part, co cooling full, auxiliary heat, and then the fan. And then they, on these graphs, they have it broken out based on color as to the energy consumption by each of the objects. Uh, that are referenced up above. So fan, and then uh, we've got uh, heating partial and then heating full. So again, I don't know what that is. This is a beta unit, so uh, didn't come with a whole lot of information. But it is kind of cool that you can get an idea of your energy consumption. The other thing is it shows your current energy usage. So it's now showing, because remember I turned the heat on? Well now the compressor is running, it's drawing, drawing 607, 609 watts. The loop pump, which I don't have one, is if you had a uh, closed loop system, it would be showing you how many watts the loop pump is drawing. The fan motor is now drawing 94 watts and I have no electric uh, heat that's turned on. So totally right now it's drawing 705 watts of energy. And if we want to go back to the dashboard, it will show us, uh, and remember this is being served up real time. So it's now at heating speed two, and you can see that, uh, yeah, okay, I'll edit that out. Uh, you can see that it is now, the, you can see that it is now supplying 78.8 uh, degrees, and return air 70, and the loop temperature is 53. So it's just starting to get uh, warmed up. It's just starting to, to heat up the air. Typically the air is over 100 degrees. Compressor speed is two, and fan motors one, and uh, again, kind of a summary of your energy consumption. 
So all in all, the, it's uh, a really a cool system. The, one, the, other, the only other bug that I have found in this is when you go to do the schedule, um, it doesn't give you the full option of, uh, and I'll show you here. Uh, let me just do an edit and let's do an edit for Saturday. You can see that for the time it's eight and there should be two zeros there. There's only one zero. Uh, so that's a bug that they, I'm sure, have probably already addressed. Uh, there is a new version of this already and uh, has not been updated yet. So those are the only two bugs that I have found in, this, in the system. Uh, and they're not really bugs, they're just oversights that needed to be corrected. Anyway, that is it. The other uh, cool thing about this thing is that they can remotely see what's going on in more detail with your system. So one of the technicians can actually look at your system and see what's going on. Uh, very, very similar to when they plug in their tool and look at it uh, so they can basically do the re remote, some remote diagnostics uh, using this tool. And that part of it is called Aurora. And uh, it works pretty darn, pretty darn cool. I haven't had an opportunity yet to, to have to use it, but it's an option that's there. And that is the Symphony that is now available and on the market. It's been on the market for, I think, as of April 1 of 2015. So, and I'm sure that there'll be more and more stuff coming down the line. But that's it in the nutshell, and uh, I hope you find it useful. Again, that's water furnace. Oh, and uh, the other thing I sh meant to show you while I'm thinking about it is in the thermostat, you can go in and again, in addition to the programming, you can get your dealer information. So if you ever uh, have a problem, you can call up the, the person who installed your system and you can either look at it from your thermostat or from Symphony. And so you can remotely uh, call them and uh, you know, ask for them to take a look at it or tell them what the problem that you're seeing and they can tie in. It, uh, again, pretty cool, pretty cool uh, system. And sky heating and cooling, I highly recommend them if you're putting a system in anywhere in Oregon and up pretty much the Northwest area. Uh, Travis, the owner, he's really knowledgeable and they have several uh, people who are very, very knowledgeable on geothermal and uh, they're gonna be around for a long time. The last person to put in my water furnace, unfortunately, the water furnace itself did a good job uh, the company went out of business, however, so I didn't get much support from the company. Anyway, that's it, and uh, I think I've covered everything.